The Incredibles is quite possibly the greatest superhero movie ever made. It's a movie that just gets better every time I watch it, but quite possibly its greatest achievement was bringing us one of the best villains to grace both the Pixar catalog of films and cinema as a whole. That of course being Incrediboy. Oops, I mean Syndrome. Don't tell him I said that. I mean, just look at that design. It's sleek, sexy, and most importantly of all, tight. And the color scheme of black and white, showing how he once had good intentions, but has been corrupted by evil and darkness, and his fiery red hair sticking straight up, showing his burning passion for revenge. Although he may have made uh, one slight, uh, small, minor mistake in the costume design department. No caps! But I'm sure it's not that big of a deal. Okay, but really, if all I had to say positive about Syndrome was his outfit, uh, then I wouldn't be making this whole video. So let me tell you really why Syndrome is an incredible villain. And yes, I'm sure it's fairly obvious that the pun was intended. <clears throat> Buddy, like most villains, didn't used to be evil. All he really wanted was to be a hero like Mr. Incredible, and for the most part, he really meant it. Since Mr. Incredible was his hero and obsession, and would continue to be one of those things for the rest of his life, his attempts to join and help Mr. Incredible at the beginning of the movie are all done with heroic good intentions. Just with the caveat that he wanted to prove that he could be a hero just like Mr. Incredible despite not having powers. Unfortunately for Buddy, Mr. Incredible doesn't exactly approve. And while he may be right in that it isn't Buddy's place to interfere in what he's trying to do, he does let his biases affect his tone, not even showing a sign of respect or admiration for this boy's bravery and enthusiasm. Well, not every superhero has powers, you know. You can be super without them. Even after Buddy shows him his rocket boots and makes a point about how he can do stuff even Mr. Incredible can't, Mr. Incredible only insults him back. And when Bomb Voyage throws a bomb onto Buddy, Mr. Incredible only sees him as a fool for not noticing the bomb, ignoring the fact that he was only trying to help. And during all this, Buddy just wanted to prove that anyone can be a hero if they try. But Mr. Incredible only seems to believe that those with actual powers should be heroes and that it's too dangerous for anyone else, choosing to try and take on all the troubles of the world himself because he believes it is his responsibility. And this ultimately backfires on him when he gets in over his head and gets blamed for all the actions he is taking. And he only realizes how little he thought through everything he did all these years later when it's too late. And as for Buddy, he of course has lost all faith in not only Mr. Incredible, but supers as a whole. Now believing that they only really care about themselves and other superpowered people. Mr. Incredible not only didn't care about Buddy's genuine attempts to help, as misguided as they may have been in the situation, but worse, he wasn't true to words he had said to him in the past. Words that meant something to Buddy and made him believe him himself. You always, always say be true to yourself, but you never say which part of yourself to be true to. Well, I finally figured out who I am. I am your ward. Incrediboy! And he rejected and insulted him for daring to even bring up the idea that someone like him could be a hero too, and without even giving him a chance. And these events burned themselves into Buddy's brain, and he would never forget them, because he used to believe so strongly that supers were the greatest people that exist. But now, he could only strongly see the exact opposite. And a burning desire was born inside him. The desire to become a better, truer hero than Mr. Incredible or anyone else, and prove it to the entire world. Despite how much Buddy seemed to hate Mr. Incredible, his desire to be like him had never left. It only changed, starting him down a path that will ultimately cause him to become blinded by jealousy. Now he only wants this so that he can prove that he is better than him, rather than to be an actual hero. The reason he stayed secret for so long was mostly because he dare not even attempt to show himself until he is certain that he can best Mr. Incredible. And he doesn't care how many superheroes he has to expend in order to perfect his plan, because all that matters is beating Mr. Incredible incredible and proving he is the best. Also, I wanted to point out one of my favorite things about Syndrome's obsession with Mr. Incredible is how he perfectly remembers everything that happened to him on that day that Mr. Incredible betrayed him, as well as all the little details about Mr. Incredible's glory days and all his heroic things he did, constantly quoting them and bringing them up in every single conversation that he has with him, which perfectly portrays just how obsessed he really is without making it too obvious. And yet Mr. Incredible barely cares about or remembers any of these things, and whenever he does, it only serves as a reminder of why he needs to let go of his obsession, of being a hero like he was in the glory days. And even further than that, Syndrome can't stand that Mr. Incredible doesn't care at all about him. For all these years he spent plotting his revenge, and yet Mr. Incredible barely remembers him. To Mr. Incredible, Buddy was just an extremely minor blip on his radar, nothing of consequence. And even when Syndrome goes on and on about his plan, Mr. Incredible treats him like a nobody. Unfortunately for Mr. Incredible, this is a mistake, since that only aggravates him into trying to prove himself 
even more. Also, the monologuing joke at this part is legendary. You sly dog! You got me monologuing! I can't believe it! And this is, of course, why he simply cannot stop shouting his name to the heavens every time anyone sees him. Because to him, being a hero is not really about being a good person, it's about how people see you and if they remember you or not. Syndrome's plot in this movie is probably one of the best villain plots in any superhero movie, since he uses Mr. Incredible's greatest weakness to lure him into a trap, that of course being his obsession with being a hero. And thus, Syndrome uses Mr. Incredible's own strength to defeat him, since the first Omnidroid was always destined to fail. So when Syndrome finally does reveal himself, he appears unbeatable, but only because he planned this for so long. This revenge story is genius because it centers around both characters' intense obsessions, Mr. Incredible wanting to be a hero again, and Syndrome wanting desperately to prove he is better than Mr. Incredible and make him suffer for his past actions. Syndrome's hatred and revenge is so deeply rooted that it makes him dangerous, not just to the world, but also himself. And and because he isn't stupid, he has carefully planned out everything. And unlike most revenge stories, the villain knows exactly what he is getting himself into and came prepared. This way he is virtually guaranteed to win, making him even more dangerous than most other revenge villains as well. And later, when we learn what it took to create the ultimate Omnidroid, we discover the true depth of Syndrome's evil and obsession. He was not only willing to kill almost every superhero who was still out there, but he was also willing to do it just so he could put himself on a pedestal and pretend to be one instead. Oh, I'm real. Real enough to defeat you! And I did it without your precious gifts, your oh-so-special powers. Another thing I really like about Syndrome is how he doesn't hesitate to kill Mr. Incredible as soon as he thinks he has the chance, once more showing that he isn't stupid like most other villains. However, when that plan fails, he realizes that killing him will be even harder than he thought, so instead chooses to keep him alive so that he can torment him instead, and then, when he is ready, come back and finish him off once and for all. And as for Mr. Incredible, despite failing to beat Syndrome at first, seeing how obsessed Syndrome has become is exactly what he needed to snap him out of his own obsessions. And now he sees the kind of person he might become if he continues to act selfishly and stuck in the past. What really matters isn't that he is or was a hero, but rather his family, and his obsessions almost caused him to lose them forever. Whereas Syndrome has nobody. He may appear to have a loyal army and a close partner, but none of them truly care for him, at least not the real version of him. I call his bluff, sweetheart, that's all. I knew he wouldn't have it in him to actually- Next time you gamble, bet your own life. The only part of him that anyone seems to care about is his fake hero facade, which only further pushes him towards believing that is who he must become. But perhaps the most important part of Syndrome's character is how he is capable of doing so much good in the world, but he is constantly being blinded by his jealousy and hatred of Mr. Incredible, so much so that he can't see how it is affecting his actions. One of the best aspects about Syndrome is that he is actually very smart and designed all his tech himself, and that is also how he acquired enough money to be able to pay for everything including his very own island. And yet, despite his incredible talent, he chooses to use it to pursue petty revenge against a guy who couldn't care less about him. You see, in truth, Syndrome is actually a genius. His abilities to create the technology he has could even be considered superhuman in its own right. The kinds of things he could do with his tech and abilities are tremendous. He could solve world problems, help those in need, be a true hero like he always wanted to be, and yet he wastes that great talent on this instead. It shows that even though he had a sad backstory where his life was ruined and his hero betrayed him, it was still his choice to become a villain. His choice not to move on. He has come to a point where he genuinely has everything he needs to be a hero, but has deliberately chosen not to do that. And all just because he can't stand the idea that someone like Mr. Incredible is still out there. Syndrome can't stand that people like Mr. Incredible are seen as heroes and he isn't. Oh dear, a very frustrating for you. To a point that he can't even see his own villainous side. Syndrome is willing to do anything to make Mr. Incredible pay, even shoot down a jet filled with innocent people if it will hurt him. And when Mr. Incredible threatens to hurt Syndrome back, he can't do it. Syndrome believes this makes him stronger than Mr. Incredible because he strongly believes in his actions and Mr. Incredible doesn't. I knew you couldn't do it, even when you have nothing to lose. You're weak. 
But what is truly better, not having a strong belief, or believing in something so strongly that it blinds you to any other perspective? Especially if said belief is built on an unstable foundation. He tries to justify his evil actions by claiming he'll make everyone into heroes in the end. This supposedly will create a better world, but of course, this is still just all part of his hatred for Mr. Incredible. As of course his most famous quote reveals. And when everyone's super... <laughs> No one will be. He really only wants to do this to make Mr. Incredible less special. And on top of that, it is an incredibly misguided goal, as he wouldn't be able to stop evil people from buying his tech and using it for their own gain either. Then again, I guess he doesn't really care too much who he actually sells his tech to, so long as people actually respect him for having made it, as he mentions having sold some of his weapons to people who needed them, supposedly, in his monologue to Mr. Incredible. Turns out there are a lot of people, whole countries, who want respect, and they will pay through the nose to get it. How do you think I got rich? I invented weapons. But of course, he still wants people to see him as a hero, even though deep down he knows he really isn't. I mean, no real hero would put thousands of lives in danger on purpose, especially not to basically just show off. Yet despite this, he has tricked himself into believing that this is still a good thing, because he'll finally be giving the people a hero they can look up to, hence him flying high above them all. It all comes back to the thing that broke him the most, the idea that everything he believed in was false. And yet, his heroics are more false than anything he believed about Mr. Incredible ever was. He just can't see it past his own pride. The biggest irony of Syndrome is that he hated Mr. Incredible for how prideful he was, but ultimately, he ends up becoming even more prideful out of his spite, while Mr. Incredible comes to realize that he was wrong for how he treated Buddy all those years ago, showing that he has grown past the man he used to be and is no longer controlled by his obsessions. Syndrome refuses to let go of his hate for Mr. Incredible, because he simply can't see Mr. Incredible as anything other than the jerk who denied him despite only trying to do something good, and it would require him to admit that he has gone too far and that all his effort is for nothing. Because he believed he was so much superior, he didn't think anyone could stop him in his genius plan, but he forgot to account for one person himself. As Syndrome is ultimately the cause of his own undoing, he dies because of his own rocket boots, his own jet, and most importantly, his own cape. Syndrome dying because of his own cape isn't just a genius payoff to a joke earlier in the movie, but it also serves as a poetic representation of his own pride and false heroics. He wanted to be noticed by everyone, so he used a cape to make himself stand out more. His outfit also featured the first letter of his hero name just to rub it in, but Syndrome's deceptive heroics could never be like a true hero, and thus the cape being his own undoing is also a sign of how his decisions were built on a faulty foundation. He may have spent years creating tech to become a grand unstoppable hero, but because he only did it for petty revenge and self-satisfaction, he was ultimately doomed to never achieve anything. Additionally, it's even more poetic because of how Syndrome's creation, the Omnidroid, could only be destroyed by itself, and in turn, so could Syndrome. And so that all leads me to the big takeaway of Syndrome, the lesson to be learned from this villain. I mean, you got some obvious stuff like don't be prideful and obsessive. But also further than that, there is also a lesson to be learned in that if someone you believed in betrays you, seeking revenge or even justice in some cases simply isn't worth it. Sometimes people will do or say mean things to us, but trying to get back at them is not the right choice. If they truly meant what they said, you're only giving them more power to use against you. And if they didn't really mean it and spoke too harshly, then suddenly you will seem like the enemy for coming at them so harshly in return. There's maturity in simply choosing not to take action, to let things go. And if Syndrome had learned that, then he never would have fallen down such a dark path as he had. And all of that is why Syndrome is a simply incredible villain. Yes, I used that pun three times in this video. What you gonna do about it, eh? <laughs> I'm sure there's tons of interesting things that I either didn't say or didn't think about saying that all of you out there in the audience would like to say about Syndrome, so please tell me in the comments down below. I do try to read as many as possible. And if you're interested in keeping up with me on social media, I am on all of these platforms around me currently. And if you really enjoy my content, then perhaps you could consider supporting me on Patreon, where you'll get access to early videos and be able to participate in special polls that will allow you to influence some of the videos I end up creating in the future. And last, but certainly not least, be sure to check out my previous villain analysis on Judge Claude Frollo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame if you haven't seen it yet, or perhaps you're more interested in hearing me talk about Pixar movies, because good thing for you, I have an entire playlist about that, including another villain analysis on the often forgotten Pixar classic A Bug's Life and its villain, Hopper. And of course, I can't go without reminding all of you to always be iconic.